This video contains solutions to practice problems from section 5.6, specifically talking about problems involving the ratio test and then strategies for analyzing the series. So we'll start with some ratio test examples. So in this problem, we're going to apply the ratio test, which means if we call this term of our series a sub n, the ratio test tells us to consider the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a n plus 1 divided by a n. The idea here is that we want to try to understand to what extent, if any, the series that we're looking at has some geometric type properties. And so we're looking at that ratio to see maybe it's not a common constant ratio, but maybe it's a ratio that tends to something as n goes to infinity. So let's take a look at what we get. So if a n is 10 to the n divided by n factorial, a n plus 1 is going to be 10 to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 factorial. And then a n is just 10 to the n divided by n factorial. We can drop the absolute value here because nothing in this series is negative, so the absolute value is not going to do anything. Now we have a fraction divided by a fraction, so we're going to flip over the bottom fraction and multiply. So we have 10 to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 factorial. And then we have n factorial divided by 10 to the n. Now, the 10 to the n plus 1 and the 10 to the n, that's a bunch of 10s multiplied together and a bunch of 10s multiplied together. And we've got one extra factor of 10 on the top and a 1 on the bottom. What about n plus 1 factorial and n factorial? Well, remember that n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 and so on, all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. But that means that n plus 1 factorial is going to be almost the exact same thing, except it's going to start at n plus 1 and then times n times n minus 1, n minus 2, and so on, all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. So the only difference between n plus 1 factorial and n factorial is that n plus 1 has an extra factor of n plus 1. So that means that this n factorial and this n plus 1 factorial will divide out, leaving an, just the factor n plus 1 on the bottom. So now we have the limit as n goes to infinity of 10 on the top divided by n plus 1 on the bottom, and as n goes to infinity, that's going to go to 0. And what the ratio test says is that because this ratio was less than 1, that means that this series absolutely converges. And that's it. All right, what about this one? So we've got n divided by 2 to the n. And again, we're being told to apply the ratio test. So like we're going to talk about later in this video, we're going to think about how to figure out which test to apply. But here we don't have to think about it. We're just going to apply the test they tell us to. So a n plus 1 divided by a n. Again, no negatives in this series, so we can drop the absolute value. Those aren't going to do anything. And when we set up our fraction, we get this. Again, we have a fraction divided by a fraction. So we're going to flip over the bottom fraction and multiply. So we have n plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 multiplied by 2 to the n over n. Again, we have a bunch of factors of 2. So we've got all these factors of 2 on the top are going to divide out, leaving one extra factor of 2 on the bottom. But we can't just cross out the n plus 1 and the n because there's no common factors there. So what we end up with is the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 on the top divided by 2n on the bottom. If it helps, we can divide top and bottom by n to simplify this a little bit, since it's a polynomial divided by a polynomial. So that'll give us 1 plus 1 over n on the top and 2 on the bottom. This 1 over n, that's going to go to 0, which means this limit is going to be 1 half. And again, since that's less than 1, that means that this series absolutely converges. So in the case where we get a ratio that's greater than 1, we would be able to conclude that our series diverges. But if we get the ratio, uh, the limit of the ratio equaling 1, then that's a case where the ratio test is inconclusive. And we're going to see that in the next example. So here we have n divided by n squared plus 5. And again, rather than think about which test to apply, we're being told to apply the ratio test. So we're going to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of absolute value of a n plus 1 divided by a n. Again, everything's positive here, so the absolute values won't do anything. But we get n plus 1 on the top, n plus 1 squared plus 5, and then n divided by n squared plus 5. So if we flip over and multiply, we get n plus 1 divided by n squared plus 1 is going to be n squared plus 2n plus 1, plus 5 is going to give us plus 6. Then we've got n squared plus 5 on the top divided by n on the bottom. 
So if we multiply this out, we're going to get n cubed plus 2n squared plus 6n on the top. And if we foil out the top, we're going to get n cubed plus n squared plus 5n plus 5. Now we've got a polynomial divided by a polynomial, and we want to think about the limit. So we're going to divide top and bottom by n cubed, the highest power of n that we see. This is going to give us the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n plus 5 over n squared plus 5 over n cubed. And on the bottom, we'll get 1 plus 2 over n plus 6 over n squared. And all of these fractions are all going to go to 0 which means we just get one divided by one, which is one. And when we use the ratio test and we get a result of one, that means that this test is inconclusive. We can't conclude anything about what's going on with this series based on that result. So the ratio test fails to tell us anything. So now we're gonna start thinking about how do we decide what an appropriate test is to use? We just saw that for this example series, the ratio test just didn't work. It didn't give us any information that's helpful. And several of our tests have that situation where if we do a comparison, but we compare to the wrong thing, the test doesn't work. The divergence test doesn't always tell us something, the ratio test and so on. So how do we decide what a good test is to use? Well, a good thing to do is to start by thinking about comparisons, is to think to yourself, is there a piece of this puzzle? Is there a piece of this series that essentially won't matter when n is a very large number? And so what we see here is that this plus five, this is insignificant when n is big. And so that means that when we think about this series, this series is essentially a lot like just n over n squared without the plus five, and n over n squared is one over n. So this gives us a guess to say, well, then this series should be a lot like the series one over n, which is the harmonic series, which we know diverges. So now the question is, how do we make that uh, analysis rigorous? How do we take that hunch that we have now that this series probably diverges because it's pretty close to the harmonic series? How do we make that precise? Well, we're trying to do a comparison here, which either means that we're going to use a, a straight up comparison, a regular comparison, or a limit comparison. And we're always gonna try to use a regular comparison first. So our comparison, the thing we're comparing to is n over n squared, again, which is just one over n. And now we wanna think about which one of these fractions is bigger. Well, the fraction on the left is, big, is a smaller fraction because it has a bigger denominator. And unfortunately, that's not what we want to do our regular comparison because that tells us that our series is a little bit smaller than the harmonic series. It's smaller than something that diverges and that's not the direction that's helpful when thinking about comparison. So this gives us a little bit of a sad face, but that means that we can think about a limit comparison. We're still gonna be able to do our comparison. We're just gonna have to work a little bit harder and do a limit comparison. So when we do our comparison, remember we put the series that we have on top and we put the series that we're comparing to on the bottom. We always put the series that we know something about on the bottom. When we flip over and multiply, we're gonna get n squared divided by n squared plus five. We can divide top and bottom by n squared there and that's gonna give us that this limit equals one. Part of what's tricky about keeping all these tests straight is that again, if we think back to the previous example, we did a limit, we got one, and that was a number that didn't tell us anything. But now we're using a different test, right? We're using the limit comparison test. And in the limit comparison test, because we got a number one that's greater than zero, that means that this limit comparison test tells us that both series do the same thing. So one is a conclusive result when we're using the limit comparison test. And so we would say, since the series one over n diverges, the series that we were given, n divided by n squared plus five also diverges. So not only do we need to learn to apply the right test to the right series, but we also have to remember exactly how that application of those series work. But in this case, we ended up using the limit comparison test. What about this example? So we have cosine of m divided by two to the n. So that might throw you off and think, well, what the heck am I supposed to do with that cosine of m? Well, the thing to think about is that this will make some of our terms negative. This will make some terms negative. So this isn't necessarily an alternating series, but it is a series that has some negative terms. 
And the good news there is that that takes a lot of our options off the table. We can't do a comparison test when our series has some negative terms. We can't use the integral test, right? We can't use some of these other tests that we've learned about. So instead what we do when we have a series with some negative terms is we look at the absolute value series. We look at the series of absolute value of cosine of m divided by two to the m. And the only thing the absolute value is gonna do there is apply to the top of that fraction because the cosine term is the only term that could possibly be negative. Two to the m on the bottom there, that's not gonna do anything with the absolute value. All right, and now we know that cosine is always gonna be between one and minus one, which means the absolute value of cosine is always going to be between zero and one. And so what we have here is something that's sort of stuck in between zero and two to the m. It's stuck between zero and one over two to the m. And what do we know about the series one over two to the m? Well, hopefully you recognize that as geometric which means we can do a comparison here because not only is it geometric, it's geometric with r equaling one half, which is less than one, and so this series converges. Which means that the result of taking this absolute value here gave us a series that's smaller than a convergent geometric series. And so by the comparison test, not the limit comparison this time, but just the, the regular comparison test, this series, two to the m converges. So what did we do? We took the absolute value of our series and we got something that converged. So the original series without the absolute values, that series must absolutely converge. That's what absolute convergence is. We take the absolute value and we get something that converges. That means our original series absolutely converges. All right, finally, we got a, one more result here. So we've got one over the uh, n squared plus one. Again, thinking about the tools that are available to us, uh, should we be thinking about the ratio test here? Well, probably not. The ratio test is good when we have exponential terms, when we have factorials, we don't see any of that here. We could think the, the integral test, or you could think to yourself, wait, I know how to integrate one over x squared plus one. I know that that's inverse tangent. And so maybe I should apply the integral test here. And that actually works if that's something that you want to do. But again, I would come back to this idea of let's get, think about getting rid of the things that are going to be insignificant when n is big. And this plus one isn't going to make any difference in this uh, series, or certainly not a large difference when n is big. So if we get rid of that, what we're thinking in our heads that we want to might maybe compare this to is one over n squared. And we know that that converges because it's a P series with P equaling two. And since two is greater than one, that's going to be a convergent series. So can we do a regular comparison or are we going to need to use limit comparison? We keep our fingers crossed and hope that we can do a regular comparison test. And this time we can, because this fraction on the left has a bigger denominator which means it's a smaller fraction. And since it's smaller than a convergent series, our comparison test will tell us that the series that we started with must converge. So this series, n equals one to infinity of one over n squared plus one converges by the comparison test. So the best thing that you can do is look over, memorize all the different tests so that you know, what, what am I looking for? Do I want this number to be bigger than one, less than one, less than or equal to one? Do I want it to be zero? What happens if the limit equals infinity, right? All of those things, understand what all the different tests do and say, and then try to think about which series does your series that you're given most resemble. If your series has some negative terms, then it might be time to try to apply the alternating series test or taking the absolute value and seeing what you get. If your series has some factorials or exponential terms, then you might try the ratio test. But just like with integration, analyzing series is a bit of a learning process. It's going to take some practice for you to figure out which tests is, are best to apply in which situations. So keep at it, keep working at it, and uh, good luck.